Okay. All right. It's 11, November 30th, 2023. It's a six scale. All right. Let's get started. So uh, we've got some, um, oh, I actually had one more thing I wanted in here. Oh, wait, it's already here. Okay. So that was like, okay. So let's start with the release one, one numbers. I can get this to load. More on the internet. Let me open the documents. Where is it LA? Is it uh the one for scale data? It, no, it should be outside. Part of scale. Uh, it's it's a readme. Part of scale. Uh, oh, it's this one. No, no. Uh, part of scale dot mb md. Give me one second. I'll get you the link. This one, the per scale benchmarks, right? Yes. Yes. Okay. Here we go. <clears throat> okay, so this is all good. This is all published. We've got um cool. Okay, we've got the the V11 release and then we've got um yeah, sweet. You've got the um we've got our dotted lines in here and everything which was us the awesome. Okay, so it came out great. This looks really good. Yep, we've got our provider, the red dotted line, and then we've got our uh green dotted line for the V1. Okay. Cool. Or is there anything you want to talk about with this LA or is there anything else? Uh you know, so I think moving forward, uh what we might end up doing is we'll keep those dotted lines as is and they'll just ship ship shift left on the graph. Uh okay. and I think there will be six dotted line in total uh eventually when um we are on a regular cadence for um, okay. Cubevert. Three for releases and three for provided change. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Sounds good. All right. All right. Let's go to the one two planning. So I've um. I don't know if I sent out an email for this or if it was uh, but on on the mailing list. But basically, <clears throat> for the um the one that two release. Um, what some things I would like us to do now that we have all this reporting and stuff, we've got um, <clears throat> we can start taking a look at um, expanding that reporting. And I think, like, one of the things like we are still missing is this you know, what's the, the vert launcher memon CP usage right now? We basically catch when a change increases, um, the amount of memory that's in the vert launcher because we have a fixed number of um, of VMs we create and a fixed amount of memory and CPU so we can catch if something increases it. We have we have no way to catch if something actually decreases it though. So it's <clears throat> it's good for now what we have, but it's um it would be really nice to get some more information so we can get the um a picture of this and graph this along with everything else. <clears throat> Just yeah. one thing. We so, have metrics um, for this so we'll need a few things. Yeah, go ahead. So I think in general, uh, I I wanted to see if we can capture metrics for all the components. So what controller uh, API server, I mean, what API and what launcher. Those are the three things that come to my mind. And the reason why I want metrics for the other two as well is, um, Later in the meeting, we are going to talk about uh, Quark, right? Um, mm -hmm. <clears throat> the point where simulation will be useful is it simulates the uh, node level components. So 
it will simulate things like word um, word handler and word launcher and from that simulation we'll be able to find the performance and sorry the resource utilization of the central components which are word controller and uh, api word api so in order to get a comparison between uh, simulated vmi results and actual vmi results i think for 1.2 we should also target uh, you know getting metrics for other central components as well okay so that i mean my thought process is that if we are able to make some progress in 1.2 um regarding uh simulation then we have the numbers this release the next release we can compare uh, simulation with real numbers and make our uh simulation you know as close as um, real numbers uh for the same number of uh vmis and then using if it is close enough we extend it to larger scale let's say 1000 so the promise we make is that okay we have got the simulation close for real workloads now using that we are scaling it up so here's how usage breaks let's say with 1000 or 2000 vmis okay so for that for that so what you're breaking down is that um is it to add so the reason I think that these would be different is because, well, so we can, well, so we can, we can add another point for this, but the reason I think um, we need a separate point for these is because for this work that you're describing, even though we can add the, the metrics for it, you, you also want to add simulation, right? It's that we, we would need to want, we would need to have some sort of simulation to basically do the equivalent that we're saying is here, that's here because this needs to be for real workloads, right? We already have all the infrastructure in place to do it for the for the API server and the vert handler. It would need to be these two plus. We need to add simulation to our CI, right? Uh, yeah, that's true. But what I what I was saying is that even though we have a simulation, right, we would need something. We would need the performance of that simulation to be compared against the real workloads. So uh, I'm saying in order to get there, let's start, uh, you know, capturing those metrics uh, in this release directly. So, okay. so if we have so, the- So you don't want to do, you don't, okay. So then, all right, so then, so what you're saying is let's let's do let's expand this to include API server and Vert handler. We're not we don't want we're we're not going to talk about doing simulation in one two. No, um, we we will talk about that, but I think the base point for that is we'll have to you know prepare for it and get metrics for uh, Word controller and uh, Word API anyways. Yeah. Well, what I'm worried about. The like I said, like how the amount we could, like, what do you think? Well, because with one two, like, what I'm worried about is the amount of things we'll be able to do. Like, if we, if we do that, like, that's my main concern. It's like if we, because I think simulation, there's there's a bunch of work that, like, I think there's a bunch of work where I think we'd have to do to pull off the simulation and and all the integration, but we could do we could focus on just the metrics. Like, what I'm worried about is if we focus on simulation and we add simulation and we add metrics for all the stuff and we add the reporting for all, all of it. It seems yeah, like it that makes sense. So I think in my opinion, uh, in order to do this correctly, uh, we should first get the data of real workloads and then you know go after simulation so that when we indeed have a simulation, we can say, okay, this compares well against real data or not. Um, if we don't have that, we don't know how good the simulation is. So what I'm trying to say is we should definitely go after uh, metrics. And in case if we want to punt something to next release, uh, it 
unfortunately it will come to the the simulation but that's how i am thinking about it well, what are your thoughts yeah i think well so i'll leave it here as something we can do like um the simulation part because i think let's do it and we can continue to work on it as yeah. like um something we can do um but i think like if we want to do the metrics first like you're saying We'll focus on this, and if we can get this done, I mean, I don't see why we can't start in on the simulation. I think my my expectation is that this is going to take us the whole uh, one to release, especially when we talk about trying to even reduce the launcher memory overhead too. Like, there's probably a bunch to do there too. Yeah. Yeah, um, I then... I think we we might need uh, some more help. Uh, Also, um, together. yeah, go ahead. One uh, question I had, uh, since we are on the topic, is um, what what would it take to, you know, extend our uh, tests from running 100 VMIs to, let's say, um, 500 or 5,000 um, minimum, minimal uh, VMIs? Um, <clears throat> what would it take, like in, in the gate, like in the, um, the dailies or the, or are you thinking the dedicated cluster? Uh, I think the I think it would have to be the normal sick performance lanes, right? Because the dedicated cluster is running an on an older version of uh, Kubernetes. And we have seen that the data is not comparable between that and the current version. So for that reason, I think I would prefer it in the performance lanes the shared cluster okay to get to 5000 um um 500 or 1000 i i think 5000 yeah so if we do so we're at 100 now so i mean um I'm not sure like we'd have to um i mean we'd have to look at really small really small vms and then i think it's um so, I mean, I expect that we're going to have to bump. The, I, I forget what our, our overhead is per VM. I think like it's um, it's somewhere in the hundreds of megabytes. So we, I suspect we'll have to bump the amount of memory that is available for us to use. But that might also be <clears throat> one problem. I mean, I'm not even sure like what we'll run into like in terms of, because um, I think it's just a single node. So we're, we're going to, probably run into Kubernetes too, where the pod count can cap to the 110 or whatever it is. Uh oh, I see. Okay, yeah, I, I think I wanted to see if we can, you know, um, scale it up to 500 or 1000 um, VMIs, just so, yeah. uh, Again, this is preparation for simulation, right? Like eventually what we would like to do is if we indeed have a simulation, let's say we would like to um, go to what? 2,000, 3,000 with, with the simulation. So for that, I think we should go to the max level that is possible in the real workloads. And that's where I had this question. Okay. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not sure what it is. I mean, we can try going over a hundred and see what happens. I mean, um, and I um, suspect we're going to just have to bump the memory a bunch. Yeah, and in in case we reach, um, you know, hardware constraints or or something like that, is there um, uh, resources we can pull together? Uh, like, what prevents? What's currently preventing us from? you know, um, going to the desired scale. Yeah, well, I think, well, that's what I think we'll, well, I, I don't know. Like, I think we'll have to figure some of that out. Like, I think 
my my suspicion is that um is being that um because this may cluster up and we're doing we're doing docker and docker it's it's going to be that we have got a single node and and that we're gonna eventually have to deal with whatever the upper limits are for kubelet are for pods so we might be able to do <clears throat> And maybe we can try and find something with um, <clears throat> additional nodes, but that's like that's why I was thinking the dedicated cluster because the dedicated cluster already has I think three or four nodes. You know, it's higher mm -hmm. pod counts, and we can get to six hundred there. But um, like, there's a lot more we can do. I think with the dedicated cluster when creating real, real VMs. Okay. Makes sense. So I think then uh, the next question is, um, can we bring the dedicated cluster to the same uh, Kubernetes level as we have uh, the normal SIG performance jobs too? So the, the reason so why- bring them down to 100? No, 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 no. I, I mean the stack, right? The Kubernetes and the control plane uh, resources, so, like, remember what we promised in in our mission and agenda is that perfect scale depends on your own hardware and uh, Kubernetes version, and and on top of that, Kubebird's performance. So, in order to compare SIG performance data with uh, SIG density data, I think the the Kubernetes version for both lanes should be similar so that we can compare apples to apples. Yeah, we need we do need them. I let's see. I thought it was on 127. But so the, there's the other well we can we can deal with that. We can get them all to the same version. But the other part which is going to be the challenge is like how can we get the how can we get the like how can we remove some of the variables which hardware being the same and 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 I don't I don't think we're gonna be able to do that between the shared cluster and the dedicated one. Like we're going to always have something different. I mean, I guess like what we could do, like at least this is what I was thinking away, is like we treat the dedicated lane as something else entirely. Like we don't we don't compare it to the to the shared one. And we use the dedicated one for the larger scale. The large scale testing, and we do that comparison. We start basically treating that as like some another data point that we track across releases, or, and maybe we run it periodically or something. Like, like I don't think we use it enough right now. We can use it a lot more, in addition to like what we have right now with the dailies. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. I I'm just little concerned about uh, <clears throat> the spread that we will have to do. So right now, what I'm seeing is that the VMI creation to running, right, like P50 and P95, they are pretty stable in the uh, shared cluster, mm -hmm. but in the dedicated lane, uh, they are going up and down. Okay. And if, if we were to treat that as another data point, uh, I, I, I think what we'll have to do is triage both. So in case of problems, um, we'll have to keep finding out uh, problems in both uh, the normal shared cluster as well as the dedicated cluster. So that's the only trade-off where if something goes wrong, we'll have to spend energy on uh, both dedicated as well as shared um, lanes. But apart from that, I think we should be able to, um, you know, use it. Well, I think if we can get the dedicated to be focused on a specific purpose, like if we only use it for some VM count that we can't reach in the shared and, and we look at it that way, like I, I think that may be where we see problems that are completely different because then we get our regular daily jobs and let's say, let's say there's a bug that comes in and there's, you know, increases memory or whatever. We'll definitely catch that in our dailies, but the dedicated cluster having more resources, you know, at least the way it's set up now is not going to see that. 
and and so we're like we're going to see different things and then what we want to get is in the larger one like i, I think the only thing we want to look for in the larger one is probably well we need to figure that out i think probably it's that we want to see what happens when we're at like a thousand you know when we're at a thousand vms and maybe look at like what the because i think one thing we've seen is that the slowdown like there's a bit of a slowdown like when you when you go to like the right end of the curve when you get to like the higher vm counts here and things just tend to slow down like i think that's what we should look at we could say it like after we could look at it specifically like after 800 vms like that could be a metric after 800 VMs. Here's what the P50 is. Like we could do only that in the dedicated cluster. That would be something we could do, and, and, and that would be that would be a little bit easier to handle than than saying like, oh, what's the P50 for a hundred? Like it, there are even we could do 500, I guess. But I mean, I think like I think what's interesting is like when you get to the last 100 that that's yeah. where it's like what is it take and then and then we can get into that world of like um of creating turn like when we get to 800 and then delete 200 how long does it take us to get us back to 800 right we could do something like that like, i think that's where like i think that's those kinds of things is where is there's like very specific points that we could report across releases that won't conflict with the the dailies yeah I think at at a larger um, picture level that that makes a lot of sense. I think what my concerns were was at the implementation level. So um, can I share mm -hmm. my screen quickly? Yeah, sure. So let me okay here. So are you able to see uh, two charts? Yeah, there it goes. Yeah. Yeah. So on the left, you see the shared cluster, right? And on okay. the right, uh, you see the dedicated cluster. So, um, oh, well, okay. So I thought that there was a spike here that we are not seeing here. But right when I shared, I realized we are looking at a different timeline. So this is September through November. And again, this is September through uh, November is here, right? So here we are seeing pretty solid um, straight line. And yeah. for some reason, we are seeing a bump up here. And we don't know why this bump up is. So like well, that, that what can I was... to the point though, like, is that Sorry, if I like th this could be the point I was making was that the the dedicated cluster has more VMs that it's creating, and maybe what's slowing us down is like the last two hundred of them in the six hundred VM creation job or something, because it's these are different. Like we can't we can't compare the two because the the VM count's not the same. Yeah, that okay, that makes sense. So I I thought my gut feeling was that because things are stable here and it's not here, that means there is something wrong with the dedicated cluster that we need to go check. But I think what you are suggesting is that we can't be sure that it's it's the stack underneath KubeWord. It could be the stack uh, with KubeWord because we don't know how uh, scalability characteristics are at a larger scale, right? Is that yeah. the correct way of putting that's, it? That's, okay. Yeah, that's exactly it, right? We had. It could be we on the left we don't know what happens after a hundred, and on the mm -hmm. right, that's what could be causing the anomaly. Right. Okay. I I think that makes sense. And I think one other thing I don't understand is that uh, for the the density cluster we always uh, go at a, a above forty p fifty, and for the a shared workload we go we are always stable at around um, 15. so i think that this is yeah. another difference that i'm not sure if we we should do you know we should do we should have a hundred we should have a hundred vm and hundred vmi tests that would be a good like a good way that we can try and normalize mm -hmm. these two and then like maybe we can compare that way like we could start with that 
and that, then that can sort of help us rule out some of this um, this so, extra noise. Uh, isn't this hundred already? Uh, Which one? So the one if on, I, the, on the right, the dedicated? Yeah, the I see there is a hundred in the name. So I thought this mm -hmm. was four hundred, but uh, what does this hundred suggest? Do you have? If you put in, if you put in four, four hundred. Wait, what happens if? Do I need to look at the thing then? Because um, I thought that we had. Uh, what we do is we. I need. I need to look at the GitHub recall. Hold on, let me see how these things are named. Let's see. So we have. Um, where is this? I think it's in hack. Back performance. No, not that one. Do you have? Do you happen to have like a, a four hundred one? Like, is it? Can you see if there's like a? Is there? Um... Yeah. Uh, I pulled up the the periodic test from our. Uh from our agenda and I see so we've got a only... density test and then a hundred density. Oh okay this starts to okay then this points to then uh, this might be a hundred. Maybe go go into the job check it. I mean don't tell us the number in there. Yeah. Exactly yeah. Uh, so I opened one for the scale test and I'll open one. Okay, so this one failed. This is wrong. Let me open this one. All right, how many do we see here? Okay, so this one has 400. And this is the scale density test. Okay. This one has 400. Hundred. Okay. Yeah, this one has hundred. So I think we are already comparing hundred with hundred. Okay. All right, we'll have to look at this then because um, that's wild that this is like, this is nowhere near, <clears throat> that's just really strange. There's nowhere near the two, like that's not even, I mean, 50, the hardware on the right on the dedicated cluster is much better than the one on the left. I, I find it surprising that we can't, that it's worse. It doesn't really make a lot of sense to me. I, I would expect the opposite. So I think we'll have to look, maybe we'll have to look at this. Um, yeah, I mean, I think before we really would uh, then before we can really make this data useful in the dedicated cluster, we're going to have to spend some time to figure out why yeah. is there a difference here. That's really strange. Okay. Oh, Lubo is here. Hey, Lubo. Hey, sorry for being late. Uh, no problem. Hey. Lubo, we're talking about the um, we're comparing the dedicated cluster on the right density test versus the the shared cluster. And both the cases we're launching a hundred BMIs and on the dedicated cluster, we get some wildly different results. So we were talking about, um, we probably need to do some work on the dedicated cluster to figure out what's going on here. So, so the right is dedicated, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's wild. Yeah, I mean, we're almost, it's like almost two to three times as slow and it's not stable at all, the trend. What was the reasoning for for the peak you saw there? We uh, don't know because we don't see anything on the left. Hmm.
Yeah, um, the book, it, it, I'm not sure if you know this by uh, on top of your head, but what's the difference between uh, the Kubernetes versions on, on both these clusters? You're right. Um, so um, definitely the dedicated, I think we, so that's, that's managed by us, right? Um, it's it's 126. Brian said he upgraded to 126 in October. And then he said yes. when when OCP 4.14 is released, he'll get it to 127. It, so it that, might that's be the dedicated. Better. Yeah, that's a dedicated, that's right. So he upgraded in October to 126, which is right where that peak is. Yeah, October. Second, so maybe the update was running at the same time. That could be. Yeah. I don't know, but it, well, I've got. He, he told me, a, uh, yeah, I don't know what day it was, but, but somewhere between early October to mid October it was updated to one twenty six. Yeah, I think what's we don't have to go too much into it. I I don't know. Like I I think like what maybe we, let, let me message Brian. Actually, he's. He's away. When Brian's back, um, let's get this to 127 and maybe we can, maybe we'll, and let's start there. I think we, we are not, yeah, we're not, we don't have enough info here. Yeah. Yeah. Let's so start with that. I we'll think... get to 127 and yeah, let's see, let's see what happens next. Sorry, go ahead. Lee. Yeah. So I think that's what I was suggesting um, is that we should kind of sort out uh, the differences and once it is close enough, I think we can make it more useful, right? Like I think then we can scale it to uh, 600 or 1000 VMIs and see where things break. Yeah, no, that makes sense, Lily. I think, um, yeah, for our first step, let's get it. Let's make sure it's, let's make sure we're not crazy here and like there's something, something wrong with um, going on in that configuration. Yeah, actually I was wondering, um... So right now we don't really uh, do any special kind of um, tunings for the clusters, but we could, all right. Um, so what do you think about, for example, running dedicated uh, CPUs for for the performance job? We could do, yeah. I mean, we could do a bunch of things, um, Lugo. I think like what we're what we're saying is like we. What we need to do first is like what Lay was showing is those two graphs need to be like we need them to be at least like the dedicated cluster should at least be the same or faster for the same number of VMI count. And then we can start talking about like what you're saying, which is like we can start optimizing with um, all sorts of various things. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's weird that it's not the uh, not the other way around, right? In that case, we, that would be explainable um, let me have a look at um, the project infra maybe I I found something so the dedicated clusters should be OCP414. So we are talking about, yeah, 126, as uh, Ryan mentioned. Yeah, let's start, we'll start with this. I think that's all we can do right now. Like, let's do this, let's get this variable out of the way. And then um, we'll need to, we'll need to see how we can um, get these two together. Okay. All right, I think that'll that should be uh, that should be okay for now. Uh, the other thing, so Lubo, I I think you missed this. This is what we were thinking for um, work for one dot two planning, um, a lot of reporting and metric changes. So like, would like to have the so Lay was saying, let's add the um, the Qvert control plane mem and CPU usage as metrics that we can report across releases. And mm -hmm. let's get this start starting to capture it in our daily jobs. And then um, same for vert launcher. We need this too, because right now we only catch it when we go over. 
because we've got a fixed number of resources. So we like we saw with Simone's change, but we should actually catch it if it goes down. Like we really need these numbers, and then that'll eventually eventually lead us into reducing finding ways to reduce memory overhead, and then the um, and then eventually like uh, these two changes here where we add metrics will lead us to being able to um, try and do control plane performance improvements and we can simulate that with kwalk sounds good to me um by the way do we do we track the performance metrics which are used by the kubernetes six scale because that could be a good indicator right that could be good base for us to see if if for example we have some uh, misconfiguration or if the cluster is misbehaving if the if the base which we take as a pretty stable, in this case the Kubernetes metrics, if those are really off, then we know that it's more of the setup issue rather than Kubernetes issue. If that makes sense. Yeah. So I think Lubo, uh, we we don't track it on a weekly basis, but uh, whenever we change provider. So last time we changed the provider, uh, there was a reduction in uh, P95 and P50 uh, of VMI startup. And we were able to spot the same difference in uh, Kubernetes six scale uh, dashboard comparing 125 to 127. So oh. anytime we change provider, and we see uh, a difference, that's when usually we go uh, look for it in, in the six scale uh, data. Right, so so uh, two things, that, that's really great. Uh, by the way, what was the difference if you... If so you I think know. we, yeah, we, uh, yeah, that's the difference that Ryan is showing. Was it, which one was it LA? It was, it was right here. The, oh wait, so is yes. You can see it here. Like, so the, uh, sorry, right. that our I, mean, red line. I mean, on the Kubernetes side, do you, did you see the, the difference? Yes, it was the exact same thing. Uh, so you see the graph uh, is scattered before the red dotted line on the left, right? And on the right, it's very cluttered and it tends downward. Uh, that's the same observation we saw in uh, Kubernetes dashboard as well. Um, it's the graph is compressed and it tends a little bit downward on the release differences. Right. Yeah, I I think we've talked in depth about it in. Uh, on November 2nd, uh, we might be able to go back to, to that and, and take a listen. Yeah, there. This is 127 and then, um, do you have another link or was that? Um... No, so if you change the... You go to like 120... Oh, here it goes, it scrolls up, that's why. Yeah. Okay. Oh, wait, I can't go to it. Hold on. Wait. Did they remove it? I don't see it here. <laughs> wait, it's, unless it's something else. What? Uh, I might have removed it. Yeah, we might have captured it in the recording. Yeah, I think it. I think yeah, I think you shared your screen and you went through this in the recording. Yeah, so so it, it's it's great that we can uh, yeah. go to the Kubernetes yeah. side and like correlate it. But I think still, if we if we would capture this, we would see we would see degradation in our in our cluster as well. And we would know when to fix stuff in our, yeah. on our side. So I, I would really, I would really like to uh, add it to the point of uh, what to do in the in the next release. If you don't disagree, then. 
Well, it's that, um, I guess what it comes down to is like the, um, like if we, we can take a look at them, like we'll review them. I guess what it comes down to is like, should we report them in here? And maybe it's a different question. Like, I, I think what, what we're, when we go to a new provider, we basically, we, we expect to do this analysis anyway. We go, like, we would go through and look in. No, and no, no, what... no, no, no. That's, that's all right. I mean, um, so let's imagine a, a situation. You have this peak, right? And you didn't change a provider. What happened, right? And now it, it can be thousands of things. And if you, if you have this metric as well from the Kubernetes, you can see if uh, if Kubernetes itself was behaving good, right? Like it's if this if we are seeing the same numbers, or that's off as well. If that's not off, then you would assume well we have some kind of regression on Kubernetes side, right? So what you're saying is you you think we should carry a dashboard like this, exactly. Ourselves? Yeah. Yes. Okay. It, I'm not sure not what we need to do for this. Yeah, I'm not so, sure what we need to do for this. Yeah, I, th I think so. They uh, they reported as a, a Prometheus metric, I think. So if we just set up the, the Prometheus scraping as we do for uh, for our metrics, I think we are good good to go with that. And yeah, um, and, and yeah, I mean we could. Um... I, well, we have to look into like all of their metrics. I mean, these are, I mean, this this specifically is like much different. Like we, this is a hundred nodes. Like they're testing based on nodes. I also don't know what they do for their, for their number of pods that they create. Like there's a bunch of things that, that I don't know here. Like I think this is a, this this might be a lot of this might be a lot we have to do. I don't I don't know. I think it's more more complicated than just getting the metrics that they have. We can have a look. Um... If it's too much, uh, we we just can push it uh, into the future. If it's not, uh, let's do it. I, I would say. Yeah, let's um, let's think about it. I I think because like what we could also do like an alternative Lubo is that when when we do come across this stuff, like when we I, I think what it would be good to make a habit of this like going to talk with the upstream sig scale. Like I we haven't had I don't know lay if you already done that or if we um maybe we need to schedule it at some point in the future but it would be good to go and show them this like we talked about them we showed them prior data like back in i don't know if it was march or may but it would be good to show them this and get their take on it because um i i, I think like i mean making a regular habit of this i think is good downstream data for them like it's really good for them to see like hey we're testing this as well and we're testing it through the, the lens of a CRD and we're seeing changes and, and we can talk about what, you know, what that means. Yeah. And that you might know, give I've us, not... that might give us the, the, um, what you're looking for Lubo. Right. Um, and I wanted to also, uh, come back to those two graphs and probably explain why we see so such differences. Um, let, let me share share the relevant uh, link. So um, no, that's wrong buffer. Sorry. This is the right buffer. And and the second one is this one. We were we were looking at a um, hundred uh, job, and then we were looking at the, at the density, right? So if you if you have a look on the first uh, link, uh, it was like uh, as you were saying, we are running multiple uh, runs, so 200, 400, and six hundred. Um, I would assume that's why we see so wild P99 and P50 because we are really doing uh, four, maybe even uh, let's see, six times no, the, no. Uh, the number. Of I think Lugo, you've got the wrong uh, job name. So the job spec that you are pointing to is um, scale density, and 
the numbers that we were uh, comparing on the right, it was from a uh, cluster 100 density test. Yeah, so that's the one that Ryan is pointing to. Oh, great. So both of them were from 100? Yeah. Great. Do we do, I... do we run a different automation? I guess we might per scale test. Do we, let me see. No, we do. We use the same automation. Yeah. Okay. Good. Yeah. I, we just need to look into this, Lubo. Yeah. I, we, we were talking, Elaine and I were talking about this earlier until he pointed out that it was a hundred. I thought it was the same thing, but then he pointed out that it was the hundred density test. So. Could, could you bring uh, out the window? Do, do you still have the window, the graph? I I, I really thought I that I saw just density. Oh, no, Elaine, the... you have it. You have it, Elaine. Do you want to share? I really think I, I saw like density without any number. Well, do you have it here? You want me to pull it up? Oh, yeah. Okay. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, I see. So that's the hundred. Um, where is it coming from? Yeah, I think we just need to spend some time looking at this and see if we want to make this this graph on the right more useful. It's, I think I think the best thing is to start with let's get to one twenty seven. I think because because we see that there was a there was a change, and let's just get as many things similar as we can here. So, um, Ryan, regarding that change, um, is that change something that is possible? Um, you know soon enough or it will take um, a lot of time to get there um well so i need to ask brian and brian's out so um i i don't know i mean it might be you know another week or two unless lubo okay. unless you know how to do it i don't know um i don't have access to like the the nodes on the dedicated cluster i don't have admin access so what was the question sorry if you have the ability to do the upgrade in um and the dedicated cluster to 127. To, it's like OCP, I don't know what the version is. Yeah. Or, or if we need to wait to Brian. You can do it away, or you can do it on, okay. Sounds good, Lugo. Yeah, if you um, want to, so he's, Brian said OCP 4.14. Yeah. Yeah, so we're okay. Yeah, if you could do that, Lugo, that'd be great. Then, then that would, then we can get this going a little bit yeah. faster. But, but I believe uh, Brian is here uh, this week. Oh, he is? Oh, okay. Well, oh, he's got a little uh, palm tree on his <laughs> Kubernetes Slack. Okay. Then. Yeah, maybe he, he, he just didn't clear her. Maybe session. he hasn't updated it or something. Maybe he's. Uh... Yeah. Okay. Well, maybe, um, Lubo, if, he, if he's not, send him a message. Maybe you can do that for me and then see if we can get this to OCP 4.14 4 and Kubernetes 127. And then maybe yeah, we can start getting this data. Cool. Okay. All right, Ole, I'm going to take it back from you. Sure. All right, so let's get to our last two points here. We only got seven minutes. So, um, Cube Mark, Lubo, this is you, right? You want to talk about this? Yeah, sure. Um... So what was the state? I basically started to have a look on two approaches, right? So uh, one approach is uh, let's mimic the cube mark and let's fake basically our read handler. Um, from initial, we got the code. It's it's a huge change, but a doable change, of course, and uh, it will the results will be more realistic, in my opinion. Um, the second approach is let's maybe get quark, right? And uh, let's get out the, uh, the weird handler out of the picture and uh, let's just uh, have some kind of controller which would act for th those handlers. Um, but I'm not sure, not really sure if it will be um, much simpler. 
the, so the problem, so the thing with QMark, yeah, let's, we'll let's talk about this. So the thing with QMark and why well, we should talk about the two of these, like the reason QMark were like versus Quark, like QMark is the goal is to focus a lot on nodes and like getting basically landing fake nodes, fake kubelets inside of pods, inside of a Kubernetes cluster. The problem with it is you need real resources to, to sort of fund that, the, um, that scale. And so that's the problem it runs into. But the advantage is what you're saying is that like you can run vert handlers then, right? We Kubernetes cares about the node object and the kubelets. We care about the vert handlers that that land there. So we can get like our our fake vert handlers that would show up on nodes. So the what's against working against us is the is the resources. Then we got Quark. Quark is basically pushing YAML around. So we don't at least I don't believe we'll get the the press, same pressure we will on the root handlers, but we'll get it on the controllers and the API. And yes. very little resource count. Like you call it a very small resource and we can get small amount of resources and we can get a lot of pressure. Many, many, wow. many times more than we will with QMark. Yeah. And, and and a good point is that it doesn't matter what you use uh, on the Kubernetes side. So if you use QMark or Quark, uh, both approaches will just work out of the out of the box, right? Well, I guess I I would say they have different purposes. Like this, the with the nodes. So like it's it's kubelets making real connections back to the API server with QMark. This is literally taking YAML and shoving it through the API server and NCD and seeing how it reacts. There's no there's no connections to kubelets and and doing whatever it is that they do. So there's no, um, it's sort of, it's, it's, it's a different way to testing, to testing scale. It's like, it would be like if, um, what happens, like all your watches, for example, right. Would be, you can something that you can simulate with, with KWAC, cause you can send out to a real API server, a YAML change, and then it needs to shoot off all the different, wakes up all the different watchers. And you do that also in KubeMark. But it's just that connection, right? You don't have a node API and you don't have something that's connecting back and forth. So like what we could, maybe we can talk about it or what would be interesting is to see what happens when this, the usefulness of this, and then try and find a like a way we can simulate for handlers. Right. So, so I was, I was, so when I was um, talking about those two different approaches, I was actually talking about from perspective of Kubeweird. Like, how do we want to fake weird handler? Um, and and why um, and why I'm 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 talking about weird handlers and not about the the topic of QMark versus Quark is because uh, whatever you use, you you get different results in uh, I would say correctness, but in Whatever you do for Kubeweird, it will work on both platforms. Is that so? Uh, so, Lubo, I think one way of thinking about this is that the scale, the the scale at which word handler needs to scale at, is much different than the scale at which. Uh, word controller and word API need to scale at. So for for constraints of how many pods you can um, put on one node, right? Word handler only has to scale for let's say 100 or, or 200 or however many pods you have on that particular. In comparison to that, uh, word controller or word API has to scale for thousands of uh, VMIs. So the characteristics of, of scaling will be more uh, relevant in, in those central components rather than in, in word uh, handler itself. And so if we can, um, so one approach is you fake out uh, the word handler uh, totally and observe the scale uh, in those central components. A, another approach is that, which you are suggesting with KubeMark is 
to not fake out the word handler, but run word handler as, as a real handler in a pod and then, uh, you know, have measure the impact at the, the central control plane components. In either of those cases, I think the study that will be important is those uh, central components because their scaling is um, really important. And so then the question becomes, does it, can we, like, would it be better if we simulate those uh, per node agents like word handler, or would it be better to run a real uh, per node word handler um, agent, right? Uh, so, yeah, I get I get what you are saying. Uh, definitely, the word handler is different scale, and well, we can test word handler even right now with one node, right? Because you, you can get a huge node, uh, real node with real kubelet with real word handler, and you just you you can just try to schedule as much of, of as VMs as you as you want, and we can just uh, we, we can just measure uh, what we see and, and such. So you're right. We are trying to focus on the control plane. Um, now I, you mentioned real uh, weird handler. Uh, what do you mean by real weird handler? So you mean not modified at all? Uh, I mean to say that the word handler is actually, so in case of Quark, right? What happens is that word handler is not running on that node. Whatever is the responsibility of uh, word handler, so for example, word handler's responsibility is to drive the VMI from scheduled to uh, running state, right? So what we we could do in the case of Quark is simulate that responsibility and have the Quark controller, uh, you know, drive that VMI from uh, scheduled to running state. So there we are simulating the second case in case of cube mark what will happen is we are actually running the the word handler somewhere uh, in a pod and word handler will continue to do its uh, its job a at least that's my understanding so there we don't need to simulate yeah, Lubo, the, um, I guess what, what, kind of what we're saying is there are two different problems. They're, um, they're, it's not necessarily one or the other. It's there's, they're, they're totally different approaches and KWALK is a different specialization than QMARKs. And I think like where, what would be interesting is like the Q, with the QMARK approach, what makes it interesting is you can get, you get the real vert handlers, but we have to, I think we have to figure out is what exactly we want to test and that the cube mark test is trying to test cubelets reaching out to the API server. And the equivalent of that for us would be what it would, I think it would be the vert handler reaching out to like, it, I don't even, does the vert handler even talk to our vert API? I don't even know if it does. I think it would just make, it makes like, um, it's mostly talking with the launchers. So like, what 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 would we be testing? Like it, it would, we get real for launchers, but it's a different test than what Cubemark is doing. Do, do you see what I'm saying? It's not like, we, it would be like as if we wanted our vert launchers to see how it behaves with a large, right. like if we had thousands of vert launchers and how it behaves with the cubelets. That I right. think would be the test, not necessarily like how vert launcher at scale behaves with, or sorry, how many, how vert handler behaves with a lot of vert launchers or how vert handler, a lot of vert handlers behave with our control plane. I think that would be a different test than QMark. I think and, I think, we, and, 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 and I think we can test that by the way. Like I think, I just think, I don't think QMark, I don't know if we'd want to use QMark for a tool like that. I think there's a third option here. Like, for example, if you wanted to, if we wanted to 
it's not simulate. We would have real, it's almost like our own cue mark where we would create a bunch of vert, vert launcher pods, or sorry, vert handler pods and see how they, and then create fake vert launchers. That would be how we do it. Um, right, right. And the only, well, I guess the only other problem is like the vert, vert handlers that Damon said, but you have to have like a bunch of fake, like if there was a way to like trick it into thinking that there are these fake fruit launchers and we'd have a bunch of the, then then see how it interacts with our API. That would be like another way, that would be a way to do it. And that wouldn't be Kwalk, I think that would be something else. So so what do you, what you're describing is basically what I'm, what I'm trying, what, what I call cube mark like approach. Okay. <laughs> so, so let me describe it. I'm, I'm just, so. We are running the virtual handler, but this needs to be simulation as well. Uh, well, maybe simulation is not the right word. So it needs to uh, fake, uh, needs to fake basically OS interaction and uh, launcher interaction. Because as, as you, as you were mentioning, uh, let me close interaction. Uh, as you were mentioning, if, if we were run, if we would run the launcher, first of all, that would be a, a like couple of a couple of megabytes of more resources. And second of all, um, we would we would need we would need a real cluster, so we would not uh, be able to uh, reuse Quark or QMark at all. Um, so yeah, we need, it's... we need it. We do need it. That That's like, that's an important point. And I think like, like we talked about this and that the problem here, like okay, Quok has no cube left and we need vert in order to run a real vert handler, we have to have a cubelet there. And so we have to have a real cluster to run the vert launcher pod, but we have to fake the interaction from the lot, from the handle. No, I'm saying it wrong. So we have to have a cubelet there to run the vert handlers. But we can fake the. We can push. We can use the same concept as Quark, where we can push YAML through the handler with fake vert launchers. So it's like it's not. It's sort of like it's like a take on Quark, but it's not. It's like K W O. Yeah, it is K W O K, but sort of Kubelet. It's Kubert. <laughs> so I, I think Kubernetes without so Kubert think... or something. What what I am understanding is that you will need kubelet that runs word handler, but the same kubelet should ignore word launcher parts uh, on right. that node. No, yes. no, no, no. So I I will explain. Um, no, that's not it. I thought it, it it should you should be able to. It's just fake for launchers. It's a real handler, but fake launchers, right? Uh, yes, yes. I will explain. So. Um, real weird handler. Uh, well, let's not call it real because it's not real if it's if it's uh, if we if we fake some kind of functionality inside, right? So maybe uh, maybe call it as hollow as uh, Kubelet is calling it, right? Because it it sure. it doesn't have a real CSI, CNI, uh, CRI, and such. So let's call it hollow weird handler, and. Uh, this is running on a on a real node. So this will consume some kind of resources, but there is a caveat, uh, and that's uh, we override we override the host name. We override the host name to fake uh, node um, to match the fake node, right? So, for example, if you if you create a fake node with Quark or CubeMark, doesn't really matter. Uh, you can tell the real or the the hollow word handler, hey, you are not running on on this node where you are scheduled, but you are running on the fake node. And this is how you can then uh, basically schedule a fake launchers. Because that will just work with Quark or QMark out of the box. 
And the weird controller will just, basically there is a handoff where it will mark on the VMI, hey handler, this is your yours now and just act and it will just work. Does it make sense or? Yeah. So I think at an architecture level, I, I understand how this is like how you're proposing to make this work, but I, I had questions, right? So, so if you look at that uh, parentheses you have, you are simulating uh, OS interaction and launcher interaction, right? So if we take a look at uh, responsibilities of Vault Hunter, at a high level, there are three things, uh, simulation of um, OS, uh, launcher interaction and then cube API interaction. So I think out of those three things, you are only selecting uh, that the word handler should run all the cube API interactions. It should fake um, everything else, right? Correct. Correct. Okay. So in the case of, so, okay, comparing this with a case where even word handler is fake, what we could do is we could take a statistics of what interaction word handler makes for uh, a VMI with cube API and simulate all that interaction in, uh, in quark or quark-like control. So exactly. I think what I'm getting at is we could do the inverse of this instead of simulating the two and keeping the real word handler, we can uh, simulate through um, statistics, the exact uh, Kubernetes uh, word handler um, interaction. And that would make the same scale uh, that would make the scaling behavior similar to what we have in, in both the approaches. The only caveat is that in case of a hollow word handler, you are uh, assuming that there is a hall, like you're assuming underneath the hollow word handler, uh, there is also a hollow cubelet, which uh, I, I don't know if that's the assumption, but what would be the pod level interaction in, in case of cube mark like approach? So let's say VMI is created and for that VMI, a pod is created. What would drive that pod to, um, you know, running state and things like that? So uh, in, in case of quark? quark would no, in ca case of cube mark like approach. Ah. So Cubemark, Cubemark also um, transitioned the pod to running, as far as I know. Is that correct? Yeah, I I am not sure. I think it's... they're fake. I think they're fake. But you have to, in, in the case yeah, of yes, this, I mean, this... They, are, they are fake, but uh, the kubelet, the hollow kubelet will also move the pod into the running state. I, I and, see. Okay. And so... Yeah, and, and this is enough for us because then what the width controller is doing, it's, it's basically saying to handler, in this case, a hollow handler, now it's your job to, to move the VMI into the running state. Yeah, that, that makes sense. So I think, I, I think what I was getting at is let's say if a hollow cubelet, uh, may, uh, fakes some things and drives the pod to running state, right? Underneath the hoods, what it is doing is it's actually again, uh, faking out the OS level integration, the storage and CNI level integration, right? So it's faking out all the network uh, related things for the pod. It's faking out all the storage related things for the pod. It's only carrying out the cube API interactions, right? So right. we are missing out data 
or scaling behavior where let's say a csi provisioner or a cni uh, implementation has to make certain number of uh, cube api calls uh, to transition the pod into running state so for example um, i i know of a stack which makes four patch calls to a pod in order to get its uh, ip address and the networking information there so we are missing out all those uh, kubernetes is to node interaction in case of a hollow kubelet so in case of a quark what we could do is since we are anyway simulating the api interaction with word handler we use the same approach to get statistics of uh, cni csi uh, as well as you know kubelet all of those interactions that happen from a node to the kube api server we can get statistics of all of that aggregate statistics uh, and then apply it to the the simulation right just the same way we applied the word handler uh, statistics so i think that that is the difference in in the work in my opinion where a quark like approach you can you know carve out an api that okay for a vmi and for a pod make these many uh, interactions with kubernetes api which is supplied by uh, you know real life statistics versus in in cube mark you can actually get selected uh, interactions via hollow word handler hollow kubelet but you'll miss out those under underlying storage providers and uh, network providers and and things like that Yeah, I'm trying. I'm trying to process that. Um, because you're right. I mean, in, um, in both cases, if you are running Quark or QMark underneath, you are um, you are you are just not seeing those other interactions, like like CNI, as you said. Um, I wonder if if that matters. Um, if it's not as simple as just you know uh, maybe adding uh, some kind of delay on top of it of of, of our results. Uh, in terms of uh, the running time, so in terms of creating the the VMI and getting it to running, okay, that it might not matter, right? But the stress it creates on the control plane. All those small, 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 small uh, interactions do matter, right? So, for example, if you take four uh, calls, patch calls for the CNI stack for one pod, and you have, um, you know, four thousand VMIs in the cluster, that would give us what sixteen thousand patch calls. So there, there you can start seeing those things matter, right? You add CSI on top of it. You add some more uh, calls from, you know, other parts of the stack, and suddenly you will see, okay, the scale uh, balloons really fast. Right. I mean, the the scale will go down, uh, go up or down, um, or the, the latency will go up, right? Um, but um, what's the correlation? So the correlation is that we, so the underlying Kubernetes and KubeVirt uh, uh, control plane components, right? We want to see how those behave at, at a larger scale. 
So for example, um, okay, Hubert stack can, uh, you know, run with 1000 BMI, 4000 BMI, 5000 5, BMI, where does, where does it break, right? So if we ignore those kinds of small, small uh, interactions with cube API, you'll not get a holistic view of at what point cube API server or vert API server breaks with this scale. And that's what we want to find out with simulation, right? The whole point of simulation is to find out bugs or the stress points at larger scale for the central centralized components. Right. I mean, yes. I mean, in uh, I would call this like complete view, right? When you want to really see like how a production class would uh, would react. That's of course like you we could we could do the simulation, but um, I think here we rather want to see how Qbird behaves. And what's the impact of the on the cluster, right? I think, and the, we, Lubo, I think the only difference is, right, is that you've got a kubelet and a real vert handler, and pretty much everything else becomes the same. I think that's the case that has to be made, right? It's like, what exactly are we going to get? What are we going to test specifically when we have a real vert handler versus when we simulate the activities that the vert handler does and thus the, 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 the vert launchers, like what what happens in QMark? It's it's that you get real kubelets and you need to test the kubelet. You need to test what happens with. We make a change to the kubelet. Is it is it causing more pressure on the API server or not? They're independent components. So like it would be the same thing. Like if, that would be I think the the reason to have a real one is that you want to test a vert launcher or vert handler change. And how it impacts the Qver control plane. That would be the only thing you get. I think having a having a real one. But the K walk point is that it's about testing and stressing the rest of the control plane. Yes, that, that that's correct. Um, but it, I, I mean, didn't quite. There are two they're two different use cases though they're, they're sort of like the like k walker doesn't intend to be to create a real vert handler because there's no kubelet of course but yeah. but, but k walk I, I, does a lot of what the k walk does most of what you get from the q mark approach with the real kubelet it does most and it does and it can do it at a larger scale but it doesn't have that kubelet interaction, right? It doesn't have the real vert, the vert, the real vert handler. So that that would be the case you're testing is that you're getting a real vert handler and you're testing specifically the real interaction with vert handler with the vert API. That's the thing that KWAC can't do. But that's but I think that's the only thing you'd get. So um, I think it might be so um lubo the, like like the way you made uh you know uh a case about a uh, cube mark like approach uh, can can i in the next call you know present this demo and make a case for quark like approach and based on that uh, presentation, can we make a, you know, a follow-up discussion? I, I wanted to get an opportunity to, you know, present what we could do with quark-like approach. And I think my intent, like the way I'm thinking about it is that if we follow the quark-like approach, whatever we are getting from a cube mark like approach, we will anyway get it and then some more. So the cube work like approach will become a subset uh, of the benefits that we are getting. 
uh, I, I think that's how I see it. And I would like to take a step to, you know, present that. Uh, Ryan, is that a correct way of putting it? What we yeah, discussed? I think let's, let's do that. But I, I think, Alay, let's include as part of this, though, that Lubo's point where is that when we have a real bird handler, specifically we so like the difference is that we don't have a real bird handler in the k-walk approach like that's like the to me in my mind the biggest difference we have no yeah. real bird handler and so that's true. and so like we don't so i that that's the only thing i would like when you compare the two when you when you can demo this um if you have a diagram or something but let, let's just show that because I, to me, there is a case for having a real vert handler, but it's to test changes in the vert handler right. code. That's all. Exactly. It's not. It's not to test the control plane because you get and that with KWalk. Well, you you can say it is, but KWalk's much better at it, and that's what it, Lay's point is. Yeah. Yeah. Just, so just I think. Be, sorry. Yeah. Just, just to be hundred percent clear, I'm not saying. Cubemark like approach should be our only approach. I'm actually what, what I want to say is we need both because they both deliver different results. And I think that's that's going to show up later in the work. Yeah, that's true. And so I think what what I take away from this discussion is that any change that goes into word handler in order to simulate or in order to account for that in the simulation, we will have to make a corresponding change in the simulation if we are using a quark-like approach. But if we are using a cube mark like approach, that change is already accounted for, and you will see the results for that change immediately in the test. You won't have to do anything extra on top of it. Exactly. So you can you can think about like a stage a stage approach where we we take an uh, environment with skewmark like approach to get some kind of simulation data and trends which you can then feed to clock and with that you can just reproduce it uh, yeah makes sense yeah. and okay. and, bo and both these cases have uh, have meaning and even kubernetes have have this two-stage approach where they do do have a cube mark, but they need to verify it in, in real life, and we need to do we need to do it too. Yeah, I, I think that makes sense. But um, in in terms of um, you know uh, planning or prioritizing, I, I think in my uh, opinion, the 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 stress test the stressing of word handler is something that we can already achieve with a single node cluster this the stressing of the control plane is something we can't really achieve because of hardware constraints so i think a case where we test the centralized uh, approach by simulating um, other things should take a uh, priority uh, in, in terms of you know um, triaging the the backlog kind of thing but you know we can defer that discussion um, it, uh, one, until we one, have more data points well one one thing like I would say to I would change the language a little bit I I don't consider the um, Q mark approach stressing the vert handler because to your point it, it can't right we, it's limited to the number of of things we can create. I think what it is, is it is, it is testing, it is testing the code. It's running that real code of the, of Vert Handler. That's like, I think the only thing we can mm -hmm. do with it. So it, it's, it's more of like, it's, it's like, um, it, it's, it's, we're sort of validating it for, for scale and performance. It, it, it wouldn't call it a stress test because it, we will do that. We can do that with Quark and you're also not going to, like I think that's where we want to do it, and and we're not going to get past a certain number anyway, because of the pod limitation, and I know. Just just a just an example. We we had a 
PRs, which added, uh, for example, get all or list call inside the handler. And if you would simulate uh, or not simulate, actually you would stress test the handler on one node, you could miss this, right? And uh, you would not trans transition this into the quark. And so the quark simulation- but, but, it's not, but it's not a stress test on the handler though. It's like you're, you're validating the code in the handler. You're not stressing because the handler itself is not going to be a stress test. We don't have a way to do that. Like, or I guess Quack could do it, but like, it's not like you're simulating it, right? I think we're, we we can say there's a limitation. We need to make sure that the code change in the handler is behaving the way it's supposed to with the rest of the control plane, which is where which is where you get what right. this is what you get from so the think, real approach. Right. I, I was I was more um, following on the idea that you can. Today you can uh, get a reasonable size node, run a real handler, and observe the the behavior after some kind of changes. Um, and you can easily miss that we added a list call or get calls, uh, which, when you have hundreds or thousands of weird handlers, would make really impactful difference on the control plane. Yes. Yeah. So you're testing, right. You're testing the code. We're, we're validating the code on the, on the vert handler. So the, the reason that's important, I, the reason I'm stressing on the language is because when we say, when we say stress, like we have to, we have to differentiate the two because what we're stressing is the API server or Kubernetes or the vert controller, the vert handler would only come under stress from launchers since that's mainly what it's interacting with, but we are we have so, limitations on how we can do this. So, Brian, I, I follow your uh, thought process, but um, the, the question is, in a real node, right, how many hollow word handlers can be done uh, realistically? And is that enough to stress the API server via addition of that list call? Uh, because if that's enough, then we are getting legitimate data out of that stress test. And the, it is still stressing API server, but checking the, uh, validating the word handler. Yeah, that's This is the case where we have the, so you said this is like hollow, I don't follow the case. This is this. Do is there a real kubelet on this node? Like we have, we run a real no, handler. No, this is. Are you this saying? is a hollow word handler, right? With an addition of that list call. So if we uh, can run, let's say, hundred of such hollow uh, word handlers, right, with one addition of list call, so that will make hundred list calls against the API server. So there. If we have the hardware resources to run 100 uh, hollow word handlers, then we can validate the word handler code change uh, via mm -hmm. a stress test against the API server and read the results of that. Right. And I think what you, yeah. I, I think we have enough resources. And I think what you said is just reasonable to, to assume. Yeah, I follow you. Okay. So let's, maybe we can, let's decide for next steps then. So for next time, um, LA, let's, uh, um, we'll have you do the clock demo. Luvo, do you, are you able to uh, get here at the start of the meeting or are you to have a conflict or something? You can only make it at the, the latter half of the hour. Yeah, let me have a look. Uh, so today was an ex exceptional day. So uh, I, I don't plan to be, late next time but let's let me just check yeah i should i should make it on time uh, the next okay week. okay so we'll, we'll try let's try and start we'll try and spend the next meeting on on basically this topic where we can walk through the details of quark la you can talk about the do the demo on this and then um maybe we can even dive into some more of like how this would look with the um, you know our hollow handlers and i think yeah. like in terms of like 
uh, and how we work on these things. I mean, LA, I think you've got the quark stuff. I mean, I think we've got uh, a good handle on that. I mean, I think we still need a lot more discussion on doing anything with the hollow bird handlers before we can probably do anything. So, I mean, it, it seems like, I mean, I think we'll, we'll start with like, let's, let's start with this demo. And I think then we'll, we'll figure out like, you know, what's next. Yeah, How's that sound sure. guys? Perfect. Um, okay. And j just to make sure I, I already started, uh, like looking at the hollow uh, bird handler. Like what would what would we what would it look like in order to have like minimal liable you know solution? Okay, well, Lubo, maybe you can talk about your discovery, like in terms of like how you think the design for this would look. I actually think like for this, we we should come up with some sort of design document because I I do think it's going to be different than Cubemark, and I think um, like Kwalk's already got it's pretty clear like what there's already designed for it. But I think what would be worth doing is taking your thoughts and writing them down and we can talk about them. Yeah, I, I can make it happen. Um, so just, I will make some kind of document. And also I will capture that, the, what we discussed here, like what, what kind of approach we can try and what's the, was the cons and pros and we can yeah. comment I, next week. I think that would be really, yeah, that would be really good. Show, yeah, show like what's have the difference, a very clear distinction of what we're testing, what KWAC is testing. I think that would be good. I mean, that even might be a good collaboration point of Maybe we can, maybe you can add in the, like what we're doing specifically with KWAC and what our intent is in our plan. And then we can also have some of the design about what Palo Vert, um, launcher would the however handler would look like yeah i i think it's so i think what you're describing is a generic document of our test plan for fence scale test plan right where one well, it, part it, well of so it not is... not exactly it's what i'm saying is like lubo wants to do design for hollow vert handler i think what we should have in there is like the clear distinction of what kwalk is going to be doing like so like Kubernetes has like this things that are not use cases for a um, for design, so we want to make sure that it's clear. Like okay, Kwalk does X Y Z, and that's what it's mm -hmm. responsible. Like that's what we wanted to focus on. Hollowvert handler does you know one two three. Got it. Okay, I, I I think I can definitely do that. And on top of that, I think when we can like as in when we have more data points from this discussion it would be great to have some kind of uh you know cum accumulated use cases so we want to stress this we want to find out uh the the effect of word handler code changes so that you know at the end of this we can translate it into uh into test plan and you know, implement it that way. Yeah, that's that's exactly that makes total sense. Cool. Okay. okay, guys, thanks for the discussion. I know we're a little over, but this was really good. So we'll we'll pick it up next next Thursday. See you for yeah. now. Bye. All right. Thanks, guys. We'll Bye. See you later.